with social media channels. Each week we talk to interesting people from the HLA community and beyond about the issues and topics that our community have expressed an interest in. The HLA has six pillars of leadership that we deliver our programmes on. The leader is a communicator, the leader is a manager, the leader is a negotiator, the leader as an innovator and entrepreneur, the leader is a follower and the leader is a philosopher. Many of the episodes in HLA Live will cover one or more of these pillars. This week we are talking about podcasting. For all of you out there that have declared, I want to be a podcaster. Pedra and the HLA Listen team have put together tonight's episode of HLA Live with Eamon, Tim, Adil, Alistair and Riddy and the rest of the HLA Live team and brought together a fabulous panel of speakers to talk about this fantastically interesting topic. Pedra, take us away. So do you want to be a podcaster? Not sure how. In our 11th HLA Live episode, we're going to ask the hosts of various healthcare podcasts their tips on how to launch your own show. By the end of this episode, you'll be motivated to do it as soon as possible. Our first speaker is Dr. Mala Morkins. She's the host of the Royal Society of Medicine Digital Health podcast series. She is currently working at the health innovation company, Selen, and was also featured in Forbes 30 Under 30 list. Our next panelist is Dr. Abdul Rahid. Abdul is a junior doctor based in London and the co-host of Scrubbed In, a widely popular podcast exploring medicine productivity alongside providing med ed pod cases for medical students. They have just recently launched their pod cases app. Our next panelist is Dr. Nandi, who is an academic F1 in Hull. She was a HLA Lesson Scholar last year, where she co-founded to build a leadership podcast. She is passionate about women's health and podcasting and also has served on the BMA student rep. She's currently on the agenda committee for this year's virtual student conference. Our next panelist is Tanae, who's a final year medical student at the University of Liverpool. He's a writer and a podcaster on issues related to healthcare and social justice. He's also the co-host to Build a Leader, the flagship podcast of the Healthcare Leadership Academy and works as a coordinator for the HLA Listen Network. Our next panellist is Owen Walker, who is a paramedic for 18 years and spent 20 years within the NHS. He is currently working for the RCRC as a pre-hospital and emergency care delegate in Cairo. He runs two podcasts and contributes to a third, the pre-hospital care podcast, Restore podcast with Owen Walker and the WEMcast. Our final panellist is Roger, a medical student at King's College London, who is intercalating at Imperial this year. He is also working at Second Nature, a digital program for type 2 diabetes. Raj is currently the co-host of That Medic Podcast. So here's our panel for today, and we'll start with a very simple question. So is podcasts something temporary, or is it something that will stay for the future generations? Who wants to begin? Let's go to Nandi. So I think um, podcasts are, are here to stay. I think it's interesting to see what the iterations are, so what it might look like, but I definitely think it is. It allows people to find stuff that's in um, their specific interests, right? So you don't have to go to radios and listen to everybody else's content to find the one episode you're interested in. You can find the thing that you want, the thing that you love, and listen to that. And that's how we all got here. So I, I hope it's here to stay. Um, it'll be interesting to see what it looks like, but I do think it is. Yeah, absolutely. That's quite interesting, Nandi. And so, Mala, what do you think? Oh, perfect. I mean, thank you so much for having me on here. I think it's a it's a really interesting topic because what I mean, what if what is the purpose and use of podcasting? Right at the end of the day, you're only the podcasting is only going to run for as long as you have listeners that are listening to it. And I I'm really interested in seeing what the next kind of iteration of podcasting is going to look like is it going to be just a simple audio recording like we have right now um you know you can stream it on spotify app or whatever whatever platform you go to or are things going to change in the future and that's what i'm really really excited about especially working with the royal society of medicine the digital health podcast i see that there are really innovative technologies that are out there to spice up the way that we can listen to content and and take in content so yeah i mean i'm excited i kind of i almost hope that the answer to this question is that podcasting um 
isn't around for always that there is a new a new way to to access content and that is iterated upon and that podcasting that we know it is is developed and adapted further um i couldn't agree with nandy and mala i think podcasting allows you to access content that is very niche that isn't per se available on platforms such as youtube or whatnot um I do think it is here for the foreseeable future. I think the barriers to setting up a podcast is slightly easier than kind of getting your own YouTube channel where you have to learn videography, video editing. Um, like Mala said, I think in the next 10 years or so, there will be a different type of way where people do consume content. For the time being, it is podcast and is increasing and platforms such as Apple, Spotify are accommodating for it. But I can imagine in the next decade or so, something amazing will probably enhance some, you know, audio-based content consumption. And Raja, what was the turning point for you? I think the turning point was really when I got responses from my friends. And uh, I didn't, when I started this thing, I, I, I came with an initial problem. And that, that problem was that my friend, you know, wanted to code, didn't know how to get involved with coding. A lot of friends want to get on med MedTech and didn't know how to get involved with MedTech. And then they listen to these episodes and these shows and they come back to me like, Raja, like, oh my God, this is great. Like, I've learned so much from it. Um, I really have enjoyed it. And just bear in mind, Pedro, like I, I've, I've, you know, working five days a week and quite tired. Um, <laughs> I've like, I've got a lot going on like at the moment and, and uh, editing these episodes take a long, long time as well. Like reaching out to people, like I didn't find the time for it. And so for me at the time, I wasn't really enjoying it that much because it's just so much work. Um, but then when I got that sort of feedback from my friends and, and I realized how much of an impact I was having, you know, even if like five people listen to it or 10 people, or, or, sorry, less than five people never listen to it. Like um, I didn't mind too much. Like, I, I just want, I just hope that I'm helping some people. If I can help one person out for me, that's good enough because I just know what it's like trying to get involved with digital health. And I've struggled myself trying to get involved with it, but somehow I've managed to have those you know, sort of great experiences. So Raja, it sounds like you've got the hang of things now. And so going to Owen, how does one go about finding a niche for their podcast? What you really need to do is look into what you specialize in and probably use your job role as a podcast forum or, or topic because that's what you're invariably going to know the most about now my biggest revelation about podcasts is that you don't need to know everything about your subject domain you don't even need to know half the amount you think you do about your subject domain what you do need to do is have people on the podcast that do know so it's more about the questions than it is the answers. So you've got to ask the right questions to get the right answers. The more you do podcasting, the more you realize it's about the questions you ask, which unlock the answers you and or others need. So, Tine, do you also agree? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think with, in terms of finding your voice is that you've got to uh, really ask yourselves, what do you wake up in the morning thinking about? Like, what is the thing that really motivates you? What is the thing that, I think particularly like in a medical, medicine, healthcare context, what is the thing that you complain with your colleagues about? Right? You know, mean tweets about, what is the thing that really gets you going, that motivates you, that pushes you forward? And, and then you've got to ask yourselves, okay, what, 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 what is it that other people are saying? What else is out there? And compare your own interests to what the market looks like. And are you, do you have something, uh, you know, an interesting voice, uh, something distinct to contribute? And both with sort of the medical leadership podcast with To Build a Leader and with my previous podcast, Sorry, I'm Just a Medical Student, it, it, it fitted in easy. It, it did the things I wanted um, to say, but I, I had to try and find a way to make sure that this is actually something unique um, to offer people. So talking about unique, Abdul, tell me a bit more about how unique is incorporated into the niche of your podcast. That's a really good question. I think with anything, a lot of people kind of find if they do start a podcast, what should they focus on? What should their niche be? What type of topics do they need to discuss? What type of guests do they need to bring on? I think the most important thing is identify what you're passionate about before you kind of go down that journey. A good way to kind of see what you're passionate about, what people come to is kind of list of three reasons why people come to you. Is it for help? Is it if you're someone that has an entrepreneurial spirit or someone that's good at leadership or whatnot? Kind of use that as a focus and kind of a base of the podcast. So for us, it was, we enjoy meeting lots of people. We want to kind of inspire, motivate the next generation of individuals that are from lower socioeconomic backgrounds 
So that was our ethos and we kind of went down that route. So a lot of our guests, if you look into it, the individuals that may have been brought up in council estates, had unfortunate events during their career that have gone on, overcome those obstacles to where they are now. So find what you're passionate about, find something that you can speak up hours on end about and then use that as a guide for the podcast. And what, the key thing is starting. Once you start, things will develop. You'll find things that you enjoy, things that you don't enjoy so much. Um, and feedback, people will tell you what they love hearing, what they don't like hearing, and you can take it from there. But I would recommend get started. Find something you're passionate about, even if it's you know calligraphy, artists, if it's med tech, the start. That's a good way to get going. I love that. So finding something you're passionate about. Um, Mala, do you have any further comments regarding finding the niche for your podcast? So the first thing to say is podcasting is like looking up a new business name, right? Probably they've all been done. They've all been taken. All the ideas, someone's already done it. That's kind of the way that you're going to be looking at it. So if you think that your podcast is going to be original, I'm really sorry. It's probably not. And so with that, you've got to find your own original voice. If you know that the theme and the topic that you're going to be talking about is probably already been talked about before. Most of the digital health podcasts, we interview the same people. Like it's the same topics, but what we ask is very different. And so between that, you have to really just decide what you want that voice to be. What type of information do you want to be sharing and who is, what is the truth to you that you want to be putting through in the podcast? And if the podcast is, is there as a tool to facilitate your own personal brand, you must make sure that you are showing yourself through that podcast. If the podcast is there for a company, you must make sure that the company is being shown through the podcast. And so it's really defining what the purpose of it is. How do you get past the six podcast, uh, six podcast, or what should we call it? Like the, uh, the I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's just a trap basically. But um, you might not. And that's the truth of it is you might do everything by the books. You might tick all the right boxes and sometimes it's just not right. It might be the wrong timing. It might be, you know, maybe the listeners just aren't interested at that um, in those particular topics. It might be, it, it could be a variety of things, right? Maybe there's a global pandemic, which means that people aren't listening to podcasts right now about your topic. So you've um, got to be open to the fact that sometimes the failure is completely out of your control. And when you do that, take it as a six, six episode pilot put it in your own head as a six episode pilot. Say, I'm going to do this for six episodes and it will be my choice whether or not I continue it or not. And don't let anyone else, um, don't let anyone else dictate that for you. And then um, the best ways to get around it, be prepared, be organized and um, don't treat it like a side hustle. If you're going to do it seriously and you want to get over the six episode thing, you must not um, phrase it in your mind as a side hustle. You must phrase it as in your head as an everyday like working hard job that you're going to put a lot of time into and they're the most successful ones so mala your podcast is extremely interesting and so can you tell me a bit more about how you found your journey into podcasting um what did you have to do how did you go by planning it so I work with the Royal Society of Medicine in the Digital Health Podcast, um, and I and I host it, I edit it, I disseminate it out. I also um, interview the um, the people that we're going to be talking with beforehand and do the whole background check. So I basically do the whole Shazam that's going on there. However, I have an incredible team around me, and I think it's really important here that you don't underestimate when you're setting up a podcast that you need expertise that you probably don't have, um, especially as a clinician um, or as a healthcare professional. You're not really taught about marketing, sales, advertising, content, all of those things. They're kind of new. So from the start, I worked with a fantastic person in the marketing team at the Royal Society of Medicine. We created a year long plan as to what the podcast would be about, what the aims of it are, um, how we can get the right target audience and shape a conversation towards what they want to hear. And then once we started recording, it was again an iterative process on top of that to make sure that we were always targeting the right people, getting the right messages across and interviewing people that at the end of the day are interesting to, to hear from because no one will listen otherwise. Coming to Raja now, so tell me a bit more about how you go by planning an episode. Like whatever I was going to do, I was going to make sure that every, every question I ask, you know, I always think about when I ask these questions, you know, what do I want to know as a student? You know, I could, it doesn't matter who I talk to. I'm like, you know, what do I want to, but if I'm listening to this as a student, what do I want to get from it? 
that's why before I even start a podcast, I literally have four questions. And, and I literally go over them like, this is the mission for this podcast. This is what I'm trying to achieve. And this is what I hope students take from it. And have you ever done something like this before? For me, like doing this podcast, like I didn't know at all how to do a podcast. I remember watching like YouTube videos with this guy called Pat Flynn and he was telling me to do garage bands and, and use all these things. And I tried it and I, I tried like Skype and trying to use Zoom to, I tried all these different things to record things and I, I didn't know where I was going. And, and it's, it's taken two, three months, but now I am like where I want to be and I think I've got much better at it. Um, and that's by just, that's just by me being like, okay, just, just give it a go and see what happens, right? And I don't think people should feel hold back because loads of people are doing things already. Just because loads of people are doing it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. <laughs> and that's so insightful, Raja. And so going to you guys at HR Lesson, your podcast is so energetic. This, I just love it in general. So tell me a bit more, how do you plan a podcast whilst incorporating that energy into it? So our podcast was scripted. So that makes it a lot more uh, difficult sometimes to bring out your, your, your character. Um, because we were informa information giving, we really wanted to make sure we were getting the right things across, accurate information. And, and so we had to script the podcast. Fortunately, when you're working with a couple of co-hosts, co sorry, you get to develop a bit of a rapport. Um, so we had our own banter as people who were working together and friends and that came across because then we just took that across onto the podcast. I think it's just about um, spending some time talking to and planning and being around the people you will work with if, if that's appropriate and you're not doing lots of interviews um, and allowing whatever dynamic comes out in that group to try and come out in the podcast because I think lots of people are here to to be a part of the relationship so um, if it's friends talking they're the extra friend who gets to listen in on the conversation and so that friendship or that personality or that group dynamic really does need to come through because I think that's what keeps people. So Owen when planning such podcasts how do you know what sort of personality you should have based on your type of podcast like for example when I did mine an interview based podcast which was more informative I took a more serious stance so what should how should one go about planning a podcast in terms of whether it should be scripted or not even you have to decide are you going to make a podcast more like an interview and so be more formulaic over an interview or do you want to be more discursive um, and more chatty and have more of a conversation rather than an interview um, certain podcasts cut it different ways i would certainly say mine are more discursive um, and talk probably far more organically i would one of my revelations is that people would rather listen to organic content than heavily scripted content now that doesn't mean you can uh, it admonishes you or lets you off scripting or preparing but I would semi-script rather than fully script because people can really tell when it's heavily scripted um, and really sort of formulaic. So I would, I would generally err towards having organic conversations um, with well-versed due diligence. So you've done your research on the guests. You've got a good idea of what, what you're going to speak about the, and, and how you're going to sequentially move through your content. But I would generally try and keep it quite organic because people really dial in. Yes, let's talk a bit more about what people tune into when they're listening to podcasts. So I'm going to go towards you, Abdul. Do you think your personality at um, on your podcast reflects your personality at work? Because when I do reflect on myself, I think my personality is very similar to how I am on these episodes and when I am in a clinical setting. So I definitely agree. I think one of the key things that people are a bit hesitant about doing podcasts or kind of making content is, does their persona they put on the podcast reflect how they are as a clinical individuals. For me, the personality I have on the podcast, even my co-host is the same. So we're the same as we were in clinical years in med school. We're still the same as we were in F1, F2. I've always been someone that kind of loves to talk a lot. Um, as you probably can tell, kind of meeting people, hearing their stories and whatnot. So for me, it's the same. Um, but I do understand where you come from. And some people perhaps do need to put on a different persona as to what they are in clinics. Um, but I think with this new cohort of tech savvy individuals that are always on Twitter, always on Instagram, on LinkedIn, they are people that are, like you mentioned, coming out of the shell. They're more happy to kind of be more themselves than just this doctor mentality where you have to be a bit more rigid, 
a bit more cautious of what you say and that is starting to come to show and I think that's what makes a good podcast when your genuine innate personality does come out and I think that's what makes you a good doctor as well I think perhaps back in the days practicing medicine was in a certain manner and form but now you know patients probably want to see you a bit more in a but you want to see your personality obviously within a certain means um but yeah that's what we found our personality as working doctors is the same personality you hear when you listen in on our episodes I'm glad to hear that, Abdul. And so going towards you, Tanae, do you think your personality on your podcast reflects your personality at, in a clinical setting? I think that's a really good question because for me, I came to podcasting you know, as, as a medical student, uh, which I still am. So podcasting was an opportunity for me to develop the kind of person who I am on clinical placement. You know, the, the, the professional today, and I guess the, the podcasting today are, are very much interrelated with each other because podcasting has given me like a, a confidence boost to how do I present myself what issues do I care about you know what what things can I push um at university or what you know research or other things I want to get those things are are, are, are completely connected when I'm thinking oh do I want to do this student selected module it's almost definitely the kind of thing I definitely want to also create a podcast episode about yeah, those things are sort of deeply intertwined for me. That's quite interesting. And so, Tanae, I can't wait to hear your new podcast when it does come out. Let's hope soon. Um, so coming to you, Raja, what do you think? Do you think your personality on your podcast reflects how you are, let's say, even outside medical school? Um, I think normally I'm, I'm quite like a bubbly person. I, I, quite, I quite like to talk. So actually, that was something I found quite difficult because the thing with podcasting is it's a lot about listening. And that was the one thing I struggled with at the start because when I came to, the, to approaching podcasts, what I, what I had was like a list of questions. And I was like, okay, I wrote down 10 questions. I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask this guy these, these questions uh, for the episode um, because this is really important information. But then what happens is that, you know, you might write, you might write down the works at like Babylon, like later down the line. But they might mention Babylon right at the start of the podcast. And you're like, wait a second, like, that wasn't what I had in mind. Like, I was going to come to that later. Let's not talk about that right now. But they, they just talk about it. And that's, like, not their fault. That's just the conversation, right? So I think what happened at the start was that I was, um, I wasn't really, I, I was, uh, yeah, I wasn't too sure um, how to, I think I wasn't really good at, at, um, at listening at the start. Um, but that's something I just developed over time. So rather than just asking specific questions, I literally just followed the conversation. And so be like, so you mentioned this, can we talk a bit about this, blah, blah, blah. So you mentioned this, like picking up on, on those sort of points and things that they say, I think that's what makes a really good podcast. And that's why my podcasts are actually long, lasting longer um, to 40, 50 minutes. And that's, I think people want to hear a longer podcast. They want to hear this great conversation, right? Which is really cool. Um, and um, it doesn't maybe reflect my personality as much because I'm generally quite bubbly and I like to talk quite a lot. But I think that skill of just listening is so, so important. And it's so... Um, people overlook it quite a lot and I, I look at like my company I'm working at Second Nature at the moment it's a really really kind of great experience working there and um, why, why I realized why the company's doing so well is the company culture is so great and the company culture is so great because everyone's so good at listening and you can imagine a startup you know it's, things are growing so fast people are so so busy yet they still have the time to just listen and and get your sort of fresh eyes and things and get your sort of advice and, and I think because I've been able to develop that listening ability through this podcast I think it's going to develop me as, as a sort of more rounded sort of healthcare professional going forward. Yes, listening is quite important, Raja. And so, Mala, coming towards you, how do you think your personality on your podcast reflects your personality at work? So, um, I don't actually work as a doctor anymore. I um, have now worked full time in the digital health space, which kind of makes that a tiny bit easier. The, um, the exciting thing is, is that actually... <laughs> Um, I was a lot more rigid and stale at the start of podcasting. So me normally, you can find me having a lot of sugar intake and probably on the dance floor somewhere like that is me. But when I'm on the podcast, I'm like this professional that is talking and interviewing you. And it's only kind of episode 10, 11, 12 of you, if you listen to it, that I start kind of opening up and sharing my thoughts, and my opinions. At the start, I felt like such an imposter talking to these people. I thought, who am I to share my opinion on all of this stuff? And then you realize that we're all kind of just average Joes kind of winging it in life. So why not share your opinion? It probably makes for a more interesting discussion. So that's where I landed. And now I try and have the same personality throughout all of it. But it is incredibly difficult. And I think that there's a lot of pressure 
um, on people that are practicing um, healthcare to, to portray something that is quite professional and upstanding in society, but actually we need to do a lot more market research on that because I'm not sure whether or not patients actually care about that anymore. So Mala, just continuing the conversation about alternative careers, do you have any advice to anyone who's taking this journey themselves? Okay, so this is a really tricky subject. And look, if it was easy to have alternative careers in medicine, everyone would be doing it, right? It's not that simple. And it's a very tricky, difficult um, path to maneuver. My advice is... Um, something that I was actually recommended, which is think about where you want to be in when you're like 45, 50, like what type of life do you want to be living? And once you've got that very clear vision in your head, like, you know, where are you waking up in the morning? What are you doing? Um, what type of work are you working on? Are you in a big team? Are you in a big company? Are you traveling the world? Are you giving talks? I knew very quickly that my, like, as I said before, my, my passions lie in two things. One is um, solving healthcare inequalities through healthcare technology, but also through um, widening the diversity in healthcare technology, right? And to be able to do that, I really enjoy the speaking around it. So I knew I needed to kind of just start almost an internship myself in learning how to disseminate content. So I did a few things. Once I've got that clear vision, you can start looking up what the opportunities are around you. Obviously you apply for like a hundred things. You probably hear back from about 10 and one of them might fruit. So just like rejection after rejection after rejection. And it's just like having the stamina to keep going because it is pretty rubbish out there. Right. And so with podcasting specifically, I knew that I needed to get more of a, an, a, a personal branding for myself within the speaker community. So I um, did some work in uh, writing and I did a stint at The Guardian, a, an internship there. And then I thought, right, I need to learn this. So I pleaded and pleaded and pleaded with the RSM to reignite their um, podcasting. And as I said, it took an, a year to get it all formalized and to get it all written up. But it's all about the persistence there. In terms of careers outside of medicine, I, um, I envy anyone that can, can be able to manage doing clinical work on the side of side, side hustles. Because for me, I found that I was doing medicine on the side of, of, of my side hustles almost, if you see what I mean. And so I knew that very quickly that because I kind of did med school on the side of my life, I was having that as a side, it was never my focus. And so it was a distraction to my long-term goal. And when it became a distraction, I knew I needed to leave and focus on what my actual goals were, which is getting more experience in innovating in healthcare, bringing in new technologies into the system and expanding on that. I'm making it sound super easy. It is horrible to have to go through this. It, that conveyor was so tricky to get off. There were so many ugly tears whilst I was deciding whether or not to do it. And there, there are still some days that I think, oh, was it the right decision for me? The only thing you can do is just um, follow, that, follow that dream that you have for what you want your life to be. And I promise you it will always work out. So Mala, it does look like you have it all together from an outside perspective. And so moving on to our next topic, which is about editing equipment and sponsorship. Landy, I'm going to start with you. Do you have any advice regarding all this? Yeah. So uh, editing, if it's an information giving podcast, there's probably going to be a bit more of work and a bit more work in terms of editing um, and a bit more work in terms of preparation um, because you want your stuff to be accurate and, and informative and useful and up to date, um, much like you would a paper. So I think there's lots to think about in terms of preparing In editing. It's making sure that the right things are coming across um, information giving as well. You can get to be clear and sound good. I mean, it has to you for everything, but you can get away with more mumbling and jokes and banter if it's topical. I think in regards to equipment, it's really variable. People can do amazing things with just Zoom, but I think it's getting a microphone um, um, you can look them up on sort of Amazon and you can get really good reviews for stuff or reaching out to some people for what microphones they're using. So if you reached out, we could let you know what microphones we used. We used one between the three of us and that worked really well when we were all together. I think in regards to things like sponsorships, we were really fortunate because we were doing it as part of HLA that we had Medics Academy and MDU sponsor us. I think it's reaching out, reaching out to people who might have an interest in what you're doing um, or just to everybody and seeing who can. I think quite often with podcasts, because there's quite a lot of them now, because it's quite popular, um, sponsorships might not happen immediately. 
Um, but that's okay. You're persevering. And this is why you have to love what you do. Persevere because you love it. And then um, as it grows or as it, as it um, continues to sort of take hold and, and become like, you know, the current trend, your podcast, then you will recruit sponsors. People will see what you're doing. People will love what you're doing. And then people will support what you're doing. But I think starting out not with the intention to be sponsored, because I think that's quite difficult as there are quite a few podcasts going at the moment. And Abdul, do you have any further advice on this topic? So the first piece of advice I would give is get started. Um, whatever idea you have in terms of content creation, be it on YouTube, be it on Instagram, be it podcasting, get started. Particularly in the world of podcasting, we live in a world where the production value or the production quality is so important. Otherwise, people turn off. So YouTube videos need to be highly aesthetic. When you have a podcast, it needs to be of crisp sound quality you need to have really cool music and the intro at the intro but before all of that i said get started you don't need to spend tons of money on fancy equipment fancy mics fancy recording gear and um, editing software that will come after time your first episode will be crap it gets better with every subsequent episode but it's getting started and over time opportunities will arise where you may get sponsorship opportunities you may have people kind of as a patron service or people, you know, they do kind of buy me a coffee thing online where you can use that money to buy better mics, buy better equipment, buy better editing software and kits. And I think just give it time and see, and things will get better um, as you do it. You'll learn how to do things faster. In terms of us, if you want to reach out, you can reach out in terms of the equipment we use, but we use a Iona mic. In terms of editing, we use um, Audition by Adobe. We use the Zoom H6 to record. Um, and we use a website called Headliner, which is really good to create those little snippets that we show on Instagram, that we show on Twitter, which is that one minute where you showcase the best parts of your episode to hopefully get them to go and download and listen to the full episodes. Um, I think that's the advice. Get started. Even if you're recording on your phone, um, get it out there. And once you see traction, that's when you can start to reinvest um, in better equipment, better mics and better kit. Thank you for those tips, Abdul. And so going to you, um, Owen, what um, microphones or equipment do you um, recommend to people who actually want to invest long term into this? So first things first, I use a Rode USB. So this Rode USB microphone. And this really gives you studio like uh, recording um, and audio. I think the audio is absolutely key. Now, one thing you aren't seeing here, which I haven't done here, is lighting. And lighting is very important if it's going to be, if it's going to be visual. So you can invest in some really great lights, uh, LED, LED lights, both on Amazon or, or, or otherwise. Uh, lighting is key if it's going to be visual. You really need to pay attention to the audio and the visual. That's such great recommendations, Owen. And I, I'm going to go on to what happens if you're starting from scratch. Because for me, for example, I got my microphone up there and I spent less than, I think, less than 20 pounds of mine. And I don't think I would have spent any more than that. So, Mala, coming to you, what do you recommend for those who want to start from scratch? So, exactly. I think that, um, how do you start from scratch, right? don't spend more than 50 pounds. If you spend more than 50 pounds on your six episode pilot, I will be mad at you because you just don't need to do that. If you are trialing this for six episodes, you're trying to get, you know, an understanding of the podcasting scene, see if it's something you want to do and you're putting a lot of time into it. You, all you need is bare minimum. So I use Anchor, a free platform. I think it's owned by Spotify and it directly disseminates your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Google, all the big ones. You can edit on your phone, on an app, using Anchor's tools. They give you free like royalties on the like intros and outros. It's all for free, right? Everything like that. And then if you've got a good working microphone on your phone, use that. If not, go to Amazon, 10 pounds, get either, you know, a small microphone or you can get a microphone that um, is like a lapel one if you're interviewing someone next to you. And then basically invest in making sure all your windows are shut. You don't have like a noisy fridge behind you. And <laughs> that is all you need. And apart from that, if you can, um, the, only, the only things I paid for, microphone and a subscription to Wave, which is like um, 
I think it's W A A V E or W A V V E. Anyway, you can look it up. But essentially, um, the subscription is so that if I am uh, doing some marketing for one of the podcasts, I can make a short snippet and it comes up with subtitles and it automatically does it for me. So I don't have to go through and put some subtitles on on a one minute clip. So that's all I do. And that just makes my life a bit easier. So please don't spend more than 50 pounds. Keep it like low maintenance, really just write out everything you need. And you probably do not need that in in house entertainment system to start with. I completely agree, Mala. And so coming to you, Raja, um, we're going to talk about speakers. How does one go about finding speakers for their podcast? What I normally do is actually at the end of every episode, I do ask the, the sort of guest, uh, is there anyone else um, that you think is worth speaking to in the healthcare space? Anyone you could possibly introduce me to? Because reaching out to these people, cold calling people is, is quite tough, um, especially they, they never heard of you, <laughs> um, which tends to be the case. Um, um, so that's what I tend to, to, to do to, to find people. Um, but also like before I started, I did have a list of different people that I wanted to talk to. For example, like Johan, um, I'm you know, a massive fan of the Health Collegiate Academy and the things you guys are doing here. It was absolutely brilliant and really inspiring the next generation of students. But, you know, Johan was always like on the list for me and, and uh, I had people like Sam Shah who was really, really thought was a really cool person. I've been very grateful to have him on, on the, on the uh, show as well. And um, so I had a few, a list of people already. And I think from networking and talking to people, you hear about start- startups, which are really, really cool and exciting. Um, so that's how I came across. Um, that's how I decided really to, what sort of guests I wanted to have on the show. So as we come to the end of this episode, I'm going to come to each one of you guys on the panel and ask what final advice do you give to anyone who wants to become a podcaster? So let's start with you, Tanae. So as we come to an end of this episode, I'm going to go to each one of you guys on the panel and ask what advice would you have given yourselves when you started this podcast? Um, so as we come to an end for this episode, I'm going to go to each one of you guys on the panel and ask, what advice would you have given yourself when starting this podcast journey? So I'm going to start with you, Tanae. Oh, I think, honestly, oh, I would give myself so much advice um, based, on, based on, like, particularly the, the, the initial podcast um, that I made. Plan, plan, plan. Collaborate with as many people, you know, outsource any creative things to people who, who you know and trust and value who are good at who are good at branding and graphic design and social media and all of those things talk to people who you know who can support you i'm not involved with your, with your podcast or whatever um find people who are good at making all of those extra things you need to make a podcast um because taking on the work just yourself or just you you and your small team can can be too much and it ends up affecting like the time you should be spending on actually creating the view. Um, and I think in terms of like microphones and stuff, you can definitely get reasonable quality things on Amazon for your first podcast. Cheerful, reliable with like strong reviews. Don't go overboard by anything too expensive. A laptop, a room, small room, off furnishings, a microphone, and some reasonable pair of headphones will set you right on making a good initial series of any podcast. Um, other tool that you always, um, when you're making any podcast, as I once had an amazing interview with a, um, a TV doctor, someone I really, really cared about, it was really great could not hear all of it after they ended up recording. You could just hear his and my breaths after everything we said, and it was just impossible to edit out. And even now thinking about it, I just so so regret not doing an audio check at the start. Spending a lot of time planning, collaborating with other people, start off small in terms of your content and then um, in terms of your equipment quality, and then you can think about investing in, in fancier tech. <laughs> Yes, I do agree regarding equipment. I think a lot of people expressed that today. And so going to you, Raja, what advice would you give to anyone who wants to become a podcaster? I think as I think I've talked about quite a lot, but again, just having a mission, I think I said it's really, really poor, just understanding why you want to do podcasts because you know it's very, very tough for medical students at the moment because they see a lot of their it's a very competitive environment. They see a lot of their friends, you know, going sky high. They got friends in YouTube channels, they have you know, a lot of medical students have these bios like they're in the life of a medical student and and they've got pictures of themselves in, in, you know having cups of coffee and doing these sort of things um and there's there's i feel like there's a sort of need 
to, 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 to get involved in social media and, and do these things. But there isn't really, there is no need to do that. I think, I think before you set up a podcast, um, do it because you want to and because you want to tackle a situation, tackle a problem. It could be like you want to set up a global health podcast or, or it could be like a, a, like a woman in leadership podcast. It could, be, um, it, it could be any sort of area that you are passionate about. And as long as you will, I think, forget about what anybody else is doing. Like even when I started this, there's a guy called um, uh, Mustafa uh, who, who does the Big Picture, po- Big Picture Medicine podcast. And his podcast is absolutely brilliant. Like it's literally phenomenal. Um, and I remember li- listening to his podcast and I, about, I was about to start mine. I'm like, this guy's already doing it. Like, why should I even start? Well, there's no point in me doing, starting my one. Like, this is literally insane. Like, there's no point in me even trying. Um, but I actually, so I spoke to my brother about it. He was like, do you know what? Like, if you're passionate about it, you like digital health, just give it a go and see what happens. And I don't regret it. I really don't regret it. So I think, I think just having a mission and understanding why you're doing it is really, really important. Um, the second thing I'd say is, is don't be afraid to reach out to people. Like, you, you, you don't, like, I remember that I talked about it a bit earlier, but I remember being at a lecture theatre and and being a bit for, too afraid to to talk to the lecturer and, and after this great speech and being a bit nervous and stuff. Um, but these people, the, the reason they come to this this lecture theatre in the first place is because they want to be there. They want to help you out. They want to they want to help our students. They're they're there for you, right? So so you know, really do network. Really do take advantage of any opportunity you have. You know, message them. You know, send them emails. You know, I, I've sent emails to three, four emails to one person one time, and and. And you feel like they don't want to reply to you because you're just a student, but a lot of them are just so busy. They're just, they're just busy people. They didn't, not because they don't want to talk to you, they're just busy. They've got stuff to do. You know, it's nothing against you as, as a person, right? Don't take it personally. Um, they're just busy people. Um, so I, I'd say um, just network as, as possible. And yeah, so to have a mission, um, network. And, and the last thing I'd say is, is just um, listen to loads of podcasts. Before you even start it, listen to it, you know, see if you benefit from yourself, see if it's something you're interested in, and then take bits of people's piece, bits of, uh, bits of pieces which are, everyone else is doing, right? And then apply it to your own. For example, like Tim Ferriss' podcast is one of the most popular podcasts. And if you go on his like, Instagram story, the way he, he posts, for example, each episode, um, I've literally just copied because it's done so well before. So I think when you're planning these things, just find out what people are doing well at the moment and try and integrate those sort of things in your episode. And then you can make it sort of the best sort of podcast going forward. Um, so that's the sort of piece of advice I, I give. That's some great tips, Raja. And so coming to you, Nandi, do you have any advice yourself on anyone who wants to become a podcaster? Yeah. Um, I also came into this saying I want to be a podcaster and now I'm a podcaster, so it works. Um, I would suggest uh, spend a lot of time thinking about what you want to do and what you want the product to be. Um, Thinking about how you want to market, how you want to sell what you're doing and who you want it to be for. Remember also that um, (laughs) if you're medical, you don't actually have a lot of spare time. Um, And so this should be something that you really want to do. um, So it doesn't disappear into the ether halfway through you when life gets busy or when you get tired. Um, And so trying to make sure you're picking something that you are passionate about, um, that you won't let fall by the wayside. Um, and really mostly, um, just do it. You don't know until you've done it. Um, there's lots of stuff to learn, but there's loads of places you can learn that stuff. Um, go for it. You might have the next big thing. We want to hear from you. So, so do it. Um, so for clinicians, especially in med students, we are always seeking external validation. So what is our ranking? What is our, um, what is our scores? What, you know, all of these things, are, are we getting the right score on our foundation program application? Everything is scored and externally validated. And so sometimes we look to get external validation on our podcasts, which seems a bit crazy because it's got nothing to do with anyone else because you are producing content that you want to produce, interviewing people you want to interview, if interviewing is for other people to listen who pretty pretty much are strangers, right? So my biggest tip would be don't look for external validation. And sometimes people say to me, oh, I've always wanted to start a podcast. My friends say that I'd be a really good podcast host or I'd be really good on podcasts. I mean, pretty much every doctor if you have done your communication skills properly at med school, would be a good podcaster. That doesn't mean that you have what it takes to produce, manage, edit, 
do everything around podcasting. And so do not get your communication skills confused with your ability to make a podcast okay it's very different things and very separate so really sit down think internally is this what I want to do why how will it help me and do I know everything that I need to put into it um, and that would be my tip <laughs> that's quite interesting Mala and so coming to you Owen any tips yourself so remember hook you need a hook people are going to invest in you don't be afraid just to start. You can always get better incrementally. Pay attention to the audio visuals, so to the lighting and to the sound. It's absolutely key. You don't have to be the domain expert. You can get expertise in and pay it forward. So always pay this forward. Introduce other people, mentor other people into the process once you are there. Because actually, if you're ever going to become not only successful, but also uh, improve on your time and improve on your efficiency of time, you can bring other people in to do what, what you're doing. And actually, a lot of people will give their time away for free for you. Therefore, your mandate is to give your time away to other people for free if they ask for it. Because you will find running podcasts that actually people are giving a lot of time to you for free. So don't be afraid to return the favour to them. And finally, Abdul, any last final advice to anyone who wants to become a podcaster? I think if someone was to tell me a lot of the skills to make podcasting or editing videos or content can be learned on the job as we were medics, it would be great. There's so many different places like YouTube, Skillshare, where you can learn how to do podcasting. There's loads of contents online. There's loads of blogs. There's YouTube tutorials on how to edit. There's YouTube tutorials that explain how mics work. There's YouTube tutorials on literally anything. So I think a lot of fear for people is, do they have the knowledge to kind of create a good and growing podcast? The knowledge is out there and you can always reach out to so many people. Um, and even if no one listens to your podcast, which we were scared about in the beginning, at least you will learn something from that individual or you will have something that documents your journey or however shape form you want to do it. Um, I wish someone told me, don't be scared. All the things you do need to know, you can learn it so easily on the internet, on YouTube, and there's so many people willing to give you a hand. Um, that's the same. If anyone wants to start a podcast, I'm more than happy to kind of reach out to them and help them on their journey. And I think it's such a fun thing to do and you get to meet so many amazing people. Yes, Abdul, I do agree. Podcasts make an interesting place to meet people. And so this wraps up our episode on I Want to Be a Podcaster, which is part of the HR Life series. I want to thank everyone who was part of this episode. Hearing each one of you discuss and provide advice on how to be a podcaster, I really wish I could have heard this advice before starting my own podcast journey. So thank you. And for those of you who want to be a podcaster, I think the main general advice from this episode is to go for it and see if it's for you. Thank you to the whole panel who took part in tonight's episode. Tonight has been absolutely fascinating. So many students and clinicians have talked to us about podcasting. We've learnt so much about this incredibly popular media format and tonight a lot of my questions were answered. HA Live is thanks to the wider team as well as Eamon, Riddy, Alistair, Adil, Tim and of course Pedra for their incredible work delivering the HLA Live programme. We are incredibly lucky to have scholars that want to make a significant impact on healthcare across the globe and use the HLA as a platform to bring their incredible ideas and innovations to fruition. If you are interested in the work of the HLA, do make sure you catch a future HLA Live episode. Join us at a HLA event or apply to one of our programmes. In fact, why not become a HLA scholar? Thank you for joining us. I am Johan Malwana and it is a good night from all of us.